so this first question will be via chat, please. So what is this ex warm up exercise called and where is it from? Back to the arms and legs again, like how we started. All right. Oh, Stephanie had the, actually, I think she answered first correctly in terms of the name of the event or event, the name of the warm up and the location. So this is called Rajio Taiso from Japan. And this is how we kicked off the first event of the year. Uh, where we are headed is now we're localization, we're transforming into more of a language operation uh, team. And then eventually, uh, who knows, we're going to be more embedded with several other teams as technology is really uh, embedding our team with all the other cross-functional team within the organization. And um, what I'm seeing with technology is the role um, on our teams are becoming hyper-specialized. So we're seeing that um, AI is just, in fact, changing the work, but it's not taking um, our work away. And because this ability to adjust output based on feedback is one of the features of these new technologies. And the truth is, it's not only the convenient feature, but it's the absolute necessity. If one wants to achieve close to 100% user satisfaction and very native experience, um, for example, in machine translation output, right? um, if, 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 if your linguists have more time to address uh, cultural aspects and how to properly um, you know, adjust the message to a specific subculture, then um, it's not taking their job, it's it's making more high level and it, it, it increases their leverage right, on what they can do um, for the company. Oh, so what do you see on the horizon? So where, where it's all going, if we're looking not at, not as it's built today, but what what do you expect to build um, you know, in five years? What's the ideal state for you? I said so the next step for us is to really become the language operations but um in in terms of teams and enablement but after language operations i think um there's going to be a lot of explore there because uh when you become the language operations you are the expert and you're running through with processes and technologies so the next step after that is really uh influencing content in the customer experience. We're becoming um, the hub for content creation and culture creation. How, how do we manage that? And how do we look at the bigger picture for that cultural influence that we have across uh, different regions? This is just a little samba, build upon a single romantic in its its very nature uh, and sensuous energy uh, really just flourishes in every note and in every chord. Um, let me uh, ask you this question. Is everybody okay and happy with the... So you have quite global origins. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your global origins, the theme of, of today's concert, but also how did you manage to get involved in Brazilian music and bossa nova based on those global origins? So uh, I am definitely um, Brazilian at heart. Somehow uh, I was uh, born in Russia. However, it was uh, 
um, a mysterious thing how that happened. But um, very soon after I uh, became a, a classical cello player um, under the influence uh, of heavy influence of my grandfather, who was a jazz player, I have um, really um, fell in love with jazz and Later in uh, um, my uh, teen years, I have learned about Astrid Gilberto, about Joao Gilberto, and about Stan Getz. Those were. The that was so, 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 so great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Tali. <laughs> yeah, so we know it made it to Canada on time. I see that. Uh, <laughs> You know, today, of course, we're talking about matcha, and matcha really has taken on a life of its own, I'd have to say. Uh, you know, traditionally, matcha was used in the tea ceremonies in Japan. It was a very sort of a revered uh, ceremony, a ritual, and so I think one of the great uh, trends, you know, with this matcha is the fact that it's easy to prepare, it can be incorporated on the go, and you're getting the full benefits and vitality of that delicious, herbaceous, grassy matcha. And what's very important about green tea, and this is Green Tea 101, is you never pour boiling water. Temperature is critical in a good preparation of green tea. And it's usually invited as a guest in a traditional Japanese tea hut. But over time, even in Japan, I think there was the mindset that it needed to be a little bit more approachable and younger. Um, so today they're even doing the traditional tea ceremonies, you know, with tables and chairs rather than on a tatami mat. But, um, you know, in terms of the localization, what we're seeing, I think that anywhere, even in the Midwest today, you're going to see these matcha lattes and bubble matcha latte teas. Um, and the fact that, you know, it's, it has gone mainstream because I think um, there was a couple of movies recently. I mean, there was one with uh, Adam Levine and he's whisking matcha and Karen Knightley says, what are you doing? And he says, I'm whisking matcha. He goes, the, the samurais used to do this, which in fact they did before they went off to, to um, battle, they would drop their um, swords, enter a tea house and enjoy a bowl of matcha, just kind of bring that kind of spirit and Zen. What I love about the traditional Japanese tea ceremony, there's there's a saying that says Ichigo Ichie, and it means one life, one encounter. And so part of that whole tea ceremony means to be present at the moment, you know, to realize that every moment only occurs once. And that, you know, it's a treasure that's not repeatable and it's you know, the moment to really focus on drinking tea in harmony. That so, taking a moment of pause and enjoying your matcha, whether it's, you know, in your latte or in your tumbler or in your um, uh, cooking, you know, it really is that moment to enjoy the one life, one encounter. Um, Japan was similar, uh, can cooler sleeve. And then this was actually my favorite, Australia, um, which uh, I had, you know, it didn't surprise me that Australia had a, kind of a fun term for this or something really unique, uh, stubby holder. And then last is targeting a language rather than a market. This is something we often see with, uh, with B2B SaaS companies. Um, you know, it could be the case that, um, you know, the, the terms around their business or are, you know, more Western, more anglicized. Mostrou que veio pra ficar mais uma vez por toda a vida.